In terms of quality and color, it might be the best external monitor I've ever used. So BenQ recently sent me their SW272U monitor, pretty much their flagship photography display. And it couldn't have came at a better time because I was just talking to my wife about me not using an external monitor for quite some time now. I used to have a Dell monitor that I used a lot, but I've had that monitor for years. With me traveling so much, of course, I'm gonna use my laptop. So when I get back home, I honestly forget about external monitors because I'm just so used to editing on my laptop. So shout out to BenQ for sending me this and I'm excited to try it out. This is gonna be another first impressions video. I may not go into too much depth about the technicalities and all of its features, but just first impressions right out the bat. One thing I wanna know is that I haven't tested it with the hood yet. My room is pretty dark and I have these black curtains, so I didn't feel the need to use it in my first initial review, but I definitely plan on attaching it to see how it goes. So the monitor comes in this huge box, obviously, right? And you get these various power cords. The monitor itself has a 4K 27 inch IPS panel, covers 99% of the Adobe RGB space and 100% of the sRGB color space. It also has a built-in calibration software, the Palette Master Element. The box includes a USB-C cord, HDMI cord, a display port, and a USB 3.0 port. So based on whatever device you're using, they have cords pretty much to fit any situation you have. In terms of ease of access, the monitor itself was pretty easy to use. You have these different buttons at the bottom of the monitor to adjust the settings, but it came with this cool little remote thingy here. So with this, you're able to adjust different settings. I thought it was pretty cool. You have this little knob here in the middle where you can adjust the brightness and you have these number button here is to switch between the color modes. So number one looks like it's Adobe RGB. Number two is sRGB and Number three is black and white. Now, I believe you can preset these numbers, but so far I'm just gonna use it in this default state. And you have this button with three dots on the left-hand side, and that pretty much allows you to just change your input mode. So right now I'm on USB-C on my MacBook, but if you wanted to use something like an HDMI 1, HDMI 2, you can just use the joystick here and pretty much just go through the different settings. When you actually press the button in the middle, it brings up the full menu. The monitor can be rotated horizontally and vertically. Depending on your needs, you can work on the laptop in the vertical mode or in horizontal mode. The monitor it has ports for two HDMIs, one DP, one USB-C, a USB-B, a headphone jack, a USB 3.0 port, and an SD card reader. So that's pretty cool. Yes, guys, I'm reading my notes. So the fact that the monitor has an SD slot too is really cool. Personally, I love the look of the monitor. I tend to lead towards keeping neutral colors in my office and things like that. So really that space gray, black, finishes around it, I'm good with it. It also has this cool leather base, so if you wanted to kind of like place things right there, like a keyboard or any little accessory you want to put there, kind of like that smooth finish it has for the base. So yeah, overall guys, I did a full engagement shoot edit on this monitor, probably do some calibration to it just to really get as accurate as I can to my MacBook, but Overall, I'm loving what I'm seeing so far. The colors are great right out the bat. Whenever I can, I always love to edit on a bigger screen just because I can see more detail when I'm retouching, skin, things like that. So as always, one thing we have to talk about is the price. For $1,499.99, $1,500 you can get this monitor. So comparing it to something like Apple Studio Display, which starts at $1,599, it makes me wonder, you know, am I getting the best bang for my buck? But I can just get Apple's native display for just a hundred bucks more, which also is a 27 inch display and it's 5K. And if you wanted to add the hood to the monitor, it's actually 129 bucks more. So you really have to weigh your options. But if you are someone who's serious about photography, this is definitely a great monitor. So is this a buy? I definitely say yes, but it is something you want to think about if you are considering Max studio display. But yeah, that's about it, guys. As always, I'm pretty simple when it comes to technology and my editing process. I just want something that's the most convenient, but also with the utmost quality, something I can just plug in and get straight to it. And the BenQ was definitely good at that. You just pop the USB-C in your Mac and you're pretty much ready to go. A lot of my photographer friends have one. They've said great things about it as an alternative to Apple's external display. So you guys let me know if you have a BenQ monitor. Let's talk about it. Let's talk external monitors. I'm definitely getting back into my external monitor game after being strictly laptop screen for quite some time now. So I'm excited to be able to multitask, edit on this screen, and continue in this journey. Thanks, BenQ. Thank you, guys. Leave a comment, leave a like, hit that notification bell. As always, let's keep going. Y'all see me pointing at it. It's, it's right here off the screen, but I just want it, you know. 
pretty much their flagship photography display and it couldn't have camped. So it makes it really convenient.